I'm sure you guys have noticed already that I use the word crud quite often. But here's the crazy part. We can simplify crud even more. We can simplify it down into just two things. And that is fundamentally at the subatomic level, computers can only do two things. And that is computers can store data, which we've already done. But we haven't talked about the second part, and that is computers can also act on data. So here's another fun fact for you. Prior to being a software developer, I was actually a real estate agent and a pretty bad one at that. But in our example, we are going to be acting upon real estate data. And you may notice something in our class here. There's almost like a logical separation. You may not know what each part of this class is, but just notice something. The top part looks a lot different from the bottom part. And that is for a reason. The top part is to store data. And we've already talked about it to a certain extent. We store data with things like properties. But what's going on in this bottom part? Well, this is where we are going to act on our data. And we act on data in the form of methods in C Sharp. You may be asking yourself, well, Teddy, we've already been acting on data. What makes methods special? What makes methods different? Well, we can easily calculate the price per square foot by dividing the price by the entire square foot footage of the house. And we can store that in a variable. And that is indeed acting upon data. But this is going to get very repetitive if you have to keep doing this over and over every single time that you want to calculate the square footage. Wouldn't it be better if we could do something that looks a little like this? And each time that we want to be able to do the calculation, we can just perform pre-made code, execute it, and store it in the variable just like that. And that is the whole entire idea behind methods in C Sharp. But before we go ahead and hop over into VS Code, let's go over methods in a little bit more detail. If you are familiar with JavaScript, methods are the same thing as functions. They are there so that you can reuse pieces of code over and over again. But methods in C Sharp are going to be a little bit more complicated because we simply have more words going on. And if you look at the top here, we have the word public. All public means is that anybody can use this function. There are no restrictions on this. Use this function in wherever and anywhere in your code base. Next thing that we have is void. The reason that we have void is because it is a return type. A void simply means that there is nothing being returned from the function, and that is because we are using a console.write line. If you want to actually return something, what you would do is you would have a return like this. And this is very important because you need to be very cognizant of what you're returning from functions because if you're not paying attention, you could just return anything. And in this case, we would be returning something more likely in the form of an int. But because this is a beginner video, we're just going to stick to console.write line right now. And console.write line doesn't actually return anything. It just prints stuff to the console. The next thing is you have the actual method name. And this is what you define the function as. And you put all the code that you want to reuse within these brackets right here. And whenever you want to actually use this code, you can call it and you can execute it by simply tacking on these parentheses at the end. If you put a method like this, this is not going to execute it. If you want the function to execute, if you want this code within your method to actually be run, you have to have the parentheses on the end or otherwise it's not going to run. But we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. Let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code and let's do some coding. So currently I'm starting with a blank slate. I've deleted all the previous classes. My program.cs file is empty. We are good to go. What I'm going to do is create a new C Sharp file and I'm going to go new C Sharp and I'm going to choose class. And within the actual uh, box up here, I'm going to type in real estate because we are going to be making a uh, class that models real estate. First things first, gonna go prop in. Within this first prop, I'm going to have a string. This is going to be an address. Of course, we need the address for our real estate. Next one is going to be for the price. And I'm going to type in prop. 
This one's going to be an int. We're going to have price and press control again. Next thing we'll do is we'll go down here. We'll type in prop again and we'll have an int and we'll also have the square footage. So go ahead, type in square footage just like this. Press control again. And here's where we're going to actually create the method. Now, remember, this is where we are going to act on the data that we are storing up top. And what we're going to do, we're going to first type in public. We're going to return an int. It's important to understand how methods actually return. So we're actually going to return something in this one. And I'm going to calculate the price per square foot. Make sure I spell it here. Calculate price per square foot. And if you don't know what a price per square foot, it's a very simple calculation. And all that you have to do is divide the price by the square footage. So we're going to go square footage just like this. Now, notice something. This looks a lot different from the methods that we we saw before because this is the new school. This is the 2024 the 2024 way of declaring methods. And if you want to do it the old school way, you can simply do that. All that you have to do is go into here, type in return, and you put the price and you put the square footage just like this. So I'll just go ahead and show it because it is kind of important to see that the way that we uh, used to do it. And this is what it would look like if you were to see a method from a couple of years ago. But nowadays, more than likely, what you're going to see is it in the form of an error function or a lambda. And we'll talk more about lambdas in a later video, but we've already got our method declared. We are ready to go. Now what we need to do is we need to actually execute this method, but first we need to populate our actual data structure with real estate data. And in order to populate the real estate data, I'm going to be using, once again, newer syntax. We've experienced a lot of the older syntax, but we gotta hop into the future and we have to do things the new school way. And the first new school way of declaring a class is we don't actually have to go into here and have real estate twice. And if you think about it, it just kind of makes sense. It's, it's a little bit redundant to have both of those types there. So we can just go ahead and leave that out and just have new. The next thing is we don't have to go in and dot everything. A lot of times when you just want to new up a brand new object, you can use this type of syntax in order to just quickly populate it with data. And I'm going to go ahead and populate the address. I'm also going to populate the square footage and I'm going to declare it as 1300, but you can make it as big as you want to. You can make it a 20,000 square foot house if you really wanna you know, ball out. But I'm gonna stay small. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a price and I'm going to declare a price of Let's see, 300,000, I think that's pretty appropriate. So if you're coming from JavaScript, you may be used to having functions that look something like this. You actually declare a variable and you return it either in the form of an arrow function and it's never attached to an object. And that's actually a true function. And we can make those in C-sharp, but 99% of the time, or maybe 90% of the time, what you're going to do is you're going to be using the actual method that's attached to your object. Now, I'm gonna teach you a cool little trick. If you want to find the type, if you want to go to where this type is actually created, this actual class is created, press control or command if you're on a Mac, go ahead, it's going to underline it and click it. And you can quickly go to the actual type. And notice that this function is tied to this class. So if we're going to actually declare a method, not a function, we're going to have to dot into our object. And it kind of is a good thing in a sense because we can logically group all of our actions, all of our methods that we actually need. I'm going to go into here, I'm going to calculate the price per square foot and we can go ahead and execute that function and watch what happens. And this is this is very important. So uh, make sure to watch this part. So we're going to run .NET watch run and you may think it would log to the console, but we're not actually locking to the con You see, nothing actually showed in the console and that's because we returned an int. We did not actually console log anything. But if we want to actually re console log this, all that we do is we go into here and we're going to say console and I'm going to say right line and you pass in this function. And what's going to happen is when this, pr this code actually runs, this function is going to execute. And by the time this actually gets to the console dot right line, the number or the calculate price per square foot is going to be pretty much injected or passed into this console right line. And let's go ahead, I'm going to go ahead, uh, 
run it again and watch what happens. We get 230. But I'm about to show you something really cool. Watch what happens when we remove the actual brackets here. Just go ahead, reach into the end of this method right here and remove these two brackets. And let's see what it actually logs when we console log it without the parentheses. What you're going to see is a system, F-U-N-C, system, funk. And this is because when you do not have the brackets, remember that if you do not have the brackets, it's not going to actually run. And it's literally just going to store it in memory. But what exactly do I mean by store in memory? Well, what's going to happen is when you click the green button or you run .NET Watch Run, C Sharp is going to go through everything and it is going to store the function in memory. But if you don't actually execute it, what's going to happen is that it's just going to pretty much stay in memory. But if we go ahead, we tack on these brackets, what's going to happen is that C Sharp is going to reach this line of code, it's going to pop it on the stack, and after the function gets done, executing it's going to pop it off the stack but that's enough for today that's a lot to take in i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to smash that like button smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching